What's up YouTube? So HP's been on a streak and they tend to release a ton of laptops throughout the year. Today we're having a look at the Pavilion X360 which is HP's entry level 2-in-1 laptop. This configuration is rocking the latest Tiger Lake specification. So for this particular laptop right here we have Intel's latest 11th generation Core i5 processor, 8GB of DDR4 RAM, Intel's latest integrated Iris XC chipset, we also have a 500GB solid state drive and yes of course we have the latest Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth standards on board and finally this is is a 14 inch 1080p IPS touch sensitive screen meaning it's definitely got all the tablet goodies you'd want. And in today's video we're gonna see if the X360 can compete in a fairly competitive entry level market when it comes to 2-in-1s and of course if it's worth your honest buck. As always if you enjoyed this review hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, Thank you for watching, let's get started. As far as unboxing goes, don't expect a glamorous experience. You have a pretty standard looking cardboard box with HP branding, a little bit, a little bit wider than the usual variety. Once you remove the content seal on the top of the box and proceed to actually open the box itself, inside you'll find a number of items. First and foremost, of course, you have the HP laptop in this plastic bag. Once you remove that, here it is in this nice metallic silver color, but we'll come back to that in just a second. You also have a quick start and instruction guide, you know, the usual stuff. Beyond that, you have a 45 watt charging adapter, albeit it is proprietary, so no USB charging out of the box. Of course, the wall outlet cable as well. And finally, you have this smaller box. Inside, you have another instruction manual, a couple of extra tips for the HP pen, and of course, finally the HP Active Pen itself which matches nicely with the color of the laptop and a energizer battery cell which of course powers the Active Pen itself. As far as laptop design is concerned, HP likes to stick with a more conservative design which isn't necessarily a bad thing. So they use the natural silver color they use across a lot of their other product lineups and to me personally I like it. It's a nice simple color. Also this laptop has a total weight of approximately 3.55 pounds which definitely means that it's light enough to carry for prolonged periods but I wouldn't go as far as calling it a super light laptop which is totally acceptable in this product category range. Furthermore, as you make your way to the top of the laptop, you'll notice you actually have a aluminum finish which looks really nice and it feels nice and cold to the touch. There's no particular texture and again, I personally like that. In the dead center, you have the HP branding with a reflective surface in a typical HP-like fashion. Also on the top side, you can see you have the two overreaching metallic hinges which look pretty premium. Now the rear side of this laptop also happens to be its most attractive side. So not only do you have super shiny metallic hinges, you also have pavilion branding in the dead center of the rear side. It just looks really nice and modest at the same time. Now as you make your way to the side of the laptop, IO port diversity is quite respectable. On one side, you have the proprietary charging port, you have a full-sized HDMI port, a USB 3.0 port, a power transmissible USB Type-C port, meaning you can use this to charge your laptop, and a full-sized SD card reader. On the other side, you have a USB 3.0 port, the good old headphone jack, and yes, the actual heat exhaust vent is located on the side right next to the headphone jack. As we make our way to the bottom of the laptop, the first thing you'll notice is that on either side of the laptop, towards the top and bottom, you actually have a rubber grip to make sure the laptop stays in place, and also to make sure it has a little bit of height, because in the center, you can see you have a pretty large and wide air intake vent to make sure the laptop gets plenty of air. Additionally, you'll notice that this is a hard TPU or plastic finish, and that's okay given that this is again the bottom of the laptop. As you unfold the laptop, the first thing you notice is that nice metallic finish chassis, and it honestly adds to the premium look of the laptop. Now, you have plenty of palm rest space, so if you have large hands, you should be pretty comfortable despite this being a 14 inch laptop. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same about the trackpad. The trackpad just feels cheap and flimsy in many ways. So for starters, it definitely has a fair bit of wobbling. So if you click on any corner of the trackpad, 
the entire base tends to lift in that direction. Furthermore, I think HP was trying to make this seem like a tactile trackpad, but they kind of overdid it. So when you press anywhere on the trackpad, you kind of get this double click effect and it just feels cheap and finicky as opposed to feeling tactile. As far as the keyboard is concerned, I really like how HP gives you a generous amount of surface area for each keycap. This really helps minimize those unwanted typos, particularly if you're a fast typer. Unfortunately, there is a slight bit of wobble on each individual keycap but for some people they might not notice this at all where others might slightly find it to be a bit of a nuisance. It's also worth noting this keyboard is entirely backlit with a two-tier lighting system. Unfortunately there is no 10 keypad but that's entirely excusable given the fact that this is only a 14 inch laptop but if you're a number cruncher keep that in your considerations. Lastly you do have a dedicated fingerprint scanner which is located directly beneath the arrow keys. Right above the keyboard itself you have a nice long Long and large speaker grill. This is a Bang & Olufsen stereo speaker setup and keep in mind we will be doing a sound test later on the video to give you an idea of how these speakers sound. Also it's worth noting the hinges on this laptop are super sturdy which is imperative because this is a two-in-one laptop meaning there's a fair bit of folding and unfolding going on so it's always nice to see companies investing in that mechanical portion and I definitely argue that it's better than a lot of the competition. Display fitting on this laptop is interesting so that's one of the fattest chins I've seen on a laptop recently. I feel like HP could have really cut down or slashed down that chin at the bottom, but the good news is that the bezels are relatively thin and on par with 2021 standards, non-obtrusive to say the least. As you make your way to the top of the laptop, that's where you'll find the 720p webcam hosted. It's worth noting this webcam is about as miserable as every other 720p webcam out there. What this basically means is that it'll work fine when you have a well-lit setting, but under low light settings, it's just not gonna get the job done. HP got a lot of things right with this laptop. Unfortunately, the display is not one of them. So you have a respectable 1080p 14 inch IPS display on board, which touch captivity but things start getting gloomy from that point on. So first things first, you only have a color accuracy of 45% NTSC, which basically means colors look bland and outright flavorless in my opinion. This basically means if you're a professional user like a photo editor or you're doing color grading with video editing, you're definitely gonna find the lack of color accuracy to be counterproductive for your respective work. On top of that, you only have a peak brightness of 250 nits, which means that for most indoor settings, this display is fine, but the minute you take this thing outdoors in a partly cloudy or fully sunny setting, you will not be able to see that screen. There's just too much glare and not enough brightness to compensate for it. The one saving grace I will say about this display is that you have excellent touch captivity, meaning there's practically no latency when you use the HP Active Pen, and it's actually a pretty big joy to use the pen itself. It's also a little bit wider in diameter than some other HP pens, which means you'll have a better grip overall. Let's talk about the performance on this laptop. It's more or less what I expected of a 11th generation Core i5 chip, meaning that any day-to-day -day task like web browsing, watching a video, or doing some word processing will be super swift and you won't notice any struggle whatsoever. Of course, really push this laptop, I opted to do some 4K video editing on DaVinci Resolve, and here's what I found. You have a fair bit of frame drop, and it's a pretty inconsistent or choppy experience, but it's still technically viable. On the other hand, if you are doing lower video editing, like 1080p video editing, it's a pretty smooth experience overall with practically no lag or choppy experiences whatsoever. Now, as far as gaming goes, this is not gonna replace your RTX 3090. Keep your expectations modest. This is a integrated GPU. However, you can definitely play most modern day games at low settings at the native 10D resolution and still get a healthy 30 plus FPS. As far as temperature and fan noise are concerned, I have to say I'm pretty impressed by the thermal management on HP Pavilion's X360. So under maximum stress, you can hit a peak surface temperature of about 36 degrees Celsius. And this is when the computer is of course plugged in. However, you average more around the 29 degree mark under a mid to high load of stress and under idle loads, you can go as low as 22 degrees Celsius. All this to say, this laptop doesn't get all that hot even under peak loads. Furthermore, fan noise isn't that bad either. You can hit a maximum noise of 36 decibels if you really push the fan to its limit, but this is a pretty rare occasion. Usually the fan runs well below that and often you just can't hear it because it's sitting idle. 
From a battery life perspective, I have to say I wasn't too impressed with this laptop, so you can get up to 7 hours in a real world test if you're doing moderate to heavy usage, so that includes stuff like web browsing, also watching a YouTube video at 1080p, keeping the backlighting on, using the speaker a little bit. Again, this isn't anything grand, but I'm not gonna say that it's awful, it's just it's just nothing to write home about. Now, if you are very conservative, you turn off the backlighting, keep the brightness less than 50%, you can squeeze up to 14 hours on a single charge. Again, if you're being super conservative. Now, HP always tends to nail the speaker system on their laptops and the Pavilion X360 is no exception to that rule. The Bang & Olufsen stereo speaker setup actually sounds fairly loud and surprisingly, it's very crisp considering this is a laptop speaker. There's very little distortion. Have a quick listen for yourself. So here's my final take. Price at $900 USD, I definitely think this laptop for the most part is fair value. So you're getting respectable build quality material, you have a mix of metallic and hard TPU material, which is fine given again the price point. Furthermore, you get two-in-one functionality, and I also really appreciate the fact that they include the HP Active Pen that comes along with this laptop, and also the, the actual touch captivity is also quite respectable. There's practically no latency on the touch captivity of the display. And that's an enjoyable experience. Now there are also a couple of potential deer breakers for this laptop. The first and foremost being its relatively lackluster display, particularly if you're a creative user. That 45% NTSC rating does leave a lot to be desired for if you do photo editing or you do color grading or any other creative task. However, the battery life is also another big area where I think improvement is needed. Seven hours in a medium workload is a little bit on the lesser side. It would have been nice if I got at least nine to 10 hours on a single charge. And that's definitely something that if you are you hoping to get all day battery life, you may want to consider before buying this laptop. But I have to be honest guys, all things considered, this laptop does offer a fair bit. I think it's durable. I think it's designed to last for the years to come. Although I would say if you can get a deal that let's say instead of 900 is $800, I think that's the golden point in terms of value for this laptop. So if you can hold out for a deal, definitely do that. Otherwise, again, great laptop. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel. It genuinely helps me grow. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Soul of Tech, logging out.